Welcome back to another episode of Vamp Van Chronicles. Let's get straight into it. Hi all. I am actually at a friend's place. They're out in the middle of nowhere. Um, here for a little bit of a respite and to get some vlogging done. And oh, it's so tranquil. It's just uh, rejuvenating anyway. So I'm actually sort of living in a normal house like at the moment, which is a bit cool and surrounded by people you love and all that. So it's just amazing. Anyway, I am here to show you the Blue Eddy. I know I've been talking about it the other day, um, but yeah, I have um, people asking for reviews of things and I usually decline. Um, but this one I had heard that was absolutely brilliant. So... I guess we better get into it, huh? And explain what it's all about. Okay. Okie doke. So this is the Blue Eddy. And what it is, is a solar power generator. So much the same as a petrol generator, but it's solar powered and silent, which we love. Um, there's quite a few of these on the market, the solar generators, and it's a new thing for the last couple of years. Um, and this is one of the ones that has shown a lot of promise. Um, I think it's probably a number one or two of the best to buy. So, um, yeah, I was super happy to be able to review this product because I know that it is good and it is well worth it. And because of the type of channel that I have, I thought it would really appeal to my audience. So let me give you a run through. So she, um, it's a nice case. It's not, uh, it's, it's like a plastic, I don't know, but it's really firm, not cheap made, you know, nice grippy handle on it. It's about 16, 17 kilos, I think, 17.2 kilos. So she's pretty heavy, but for what's in it, um, it's a surprise that it is, weighs that little. So all together, it is basically your battery, lithium battery, that has a fantastic BMS system in it. Um, that's a battery monitoring system. I'll explain all this as we go. Um, and then an inverter, so you can use it as 12 volt or 240. So um, it just packs the whole punch. So all you need th is this and some solar panels and you're done, that you don't actually need anything else, which is just extraordinary. I've gone through all the effort of putting all of those individual pieces and the wiring and it's a pain in the butt. So if this had existed at the time I did mine, I would have gone this way, but it didn't. So anyway, now listen, this is gonna be a bit of a different review. There is lots of reviews on the Blue Eddy, but they're very scientific. Um, and sometimes it just goes over the top of people's heads. So I'm actually gonna take it from a different approach and explain to you what it basically equates to, okay? So um, yeah, here we go. So on the back, oh, there we go. On the back, you have a, a fan that basically sucks the air in and it goes through the front. So when it gets overheated, um, it'll actually just, the fan will pop on and off you go. And that's the only noise this thing makes. It's incredible. Um, here we've got uh, two 240 outputs. So your main outputs. Um, and they combined have a, a thousand watts on it. Now, I'm not sure whether that's actually a thousand watts, but I'll be able to find out soon enough. Um, so I'll, I'll let you know. Um, yes, yeah, so that's all for the back. It's basically 240 here. So one thing to remember, if you're going to put this in a cupboard or something, you're going to need, um, some airflow. Okay. So you can't put it hard up against something. It needs to have the airflow in case it gets hot. Okay, so this is the front of the unit. That's the air outtake. Remember how I was saying it goes through the machine, so that's where the air comes out of. Um, and basically you can see we've got a few functions here. So what we can do is pop it on. So we'll just turn it on here. There we go. And the you can see there's three digitals there. The first one is the input. That's basically when it's charging, how many watts are going in there to charge, okay? The second one is the DC on, which is basically any 12 volt or any of these items here will pop up on this DC. And the AC, so we can put the DC on. You can have it all on together or separately, it doesn't matter. Um, and then you can put the AC on. And what that is, is that allows you to plug the main house appliances on the back. So it'll work off the back. So, um, 
yeah, so that AC has to be on because that will turn the inverter on. So let's just turn that off for the minute and we'll deal with this at, at front side first. And this is the input here um, and that's basically where you can charge the unit. And there's two ways technically to charge it. There are other ways, but we'll can get into that another time. Um, but the charge, the main charge is through the mains converter here, which will go through onto your mains power supply. So um, you, you plug it into the wall and charge it. It takes around about um, 10 hours to plug that in and charge it fully. So the other option is obviously the free option, which is the solar. So this makes this beautiful unit completely um, off grid, you know. So you just plug this in here, plug it with your PC4 connectors into your solar. Um, there's a few restrictions on that, but I'll get back to you on, on that in further in the video. And you can actually charge the unit up with solar, which will take anywhere from three hours to six hours, or you can just leave it on the solar so it charges it as you use it. So you've got a few options there. Now, the other thing that's really good about this um, unit is this USB panel here. So you can see the circles around them, and that's, there's two individual lots, and each of them can draw three amps or five volts, right? So you can, if you were plugging two phones in, you would actually put one on that side and one on that side. Whereas if you put them to both there, it'll share the, the voltage. So it'll be quicker if you did this one and this one to charge your phones or, or whatever you've got on USB. Um, and now this is the awesome part, this PD point. At 45 watts, that will charge your um, Apple, your laptop, or some of the laptops, um, if can have an input through this and that would be really good because 45 watts is quite big um won't charge mine because mine's a, a, a massive gaming machine so it's like no <laughs> um the other thing you've got is this 12 volt this dc 12 volt um input now it's basically a it's got a limit of nine amps so just be careful on that one it is a little low there may be some things that you can't run off it um, but the beauty about it is it's regulated now what that means is that as the battery decreases that will always be 12.8 um, volts that uh, that's going through there so it, it will remain the same no matter how, what level of the battery it's at Whereas an unregulated one, as you deplete the battery, the less and less the voltage goes down on this. And it's then it becomes sort of not workable, you know, whereas that will stay workable until this is empty. So that's a, a huge point to um, keep in mind. Now, um, so I'll give you a little demo on the input. All right, let's get this iPad charging. And you will see here on the second thing, the amount of watts it takes to charge the iPad, which is nothing, right? So just bear that in mind, five watts, charge iPad, no problems. You can put your phone on it, but my phone's currently used, being used. <laughs> put the phone on it and I can charge that as well, which is being used at the moment. And that's four watts. 3 watts, 4 watts, just thinking about it. Now I'm going to show you the back of the panel and show you how it works on AC current. Alright, so effectively the AC is basically anything with a plug, right? I know that seems obvious, but it's not always obvious. So we'll plug it in to the back here. And if you watch the third quadruple zero, you will see that it will now change and it is now charging that battery by ease. <laughs> 172 watts you can see. And um, so it's sitting and it's charging the battery, not a problem at all. So another thing that you might have when you're camping, a sandwich maker, cheap and cheerful sandwich maker. You hear the fan goes on straight away. So it's obviously drawing quite a lot of watts. 737 so you can take a sandwich maker and you can make sandwiches toasted sandwiches who would want a toasted banana sandwich like really it's my best it's the best absolutely love it very nice all right now you hear the fans gone back off what else can we charge 
Uh, oh, I got this one in. This is a good one. Okay, this says it is a thousand watts for the girls out there. You know, we like to look good in the bush. <laughs> so this is a hair dryer and a, it's not mine. I just stole it from the people whose house I'm in at the moment. So it's a hair dryer and a curler at the same time. I thought, well, that's pretty spick. So this is the thousand watts. So um, let's see if it runs it. I'm pretty sure it would. This is where two years ago it wouldn't actually do this, but it, they have fixed the problem. They should be able to pull it. If it says a thousand watts, it should be able to pull a thousand watts. And before it wouldn't because it's, it wasn't counting the energy that is running the inverter. So obviously, you watch this, they, they fix the problem. Okay, you can see that peaked out at 960. Now on the older models, um, that would drop out because um, it would run for about a minute or so and then say, no, I can't do any more. Now, I've got one very interesting one for you. Okay, now this one is something that's super interesting. So it's actually an induction panel um, cooktop. The beauty of this one is it actually has a watch control. So you can actually dial the watts up and down, which is actually really, I haven't actually seen that in one of these. Um, and so, yeah, technically, you should be able to work, it should be able to work. And we'll be able to peek it out and tell you where this thing goes and then when it dies. Okay, so the unit's on, should be just drawing a little bit. Yeah, it is, 37, um, because it's not powered on, but it is on, if you know what I mean. So with this one, it's on now. You can actually change the watts. See, it says 2,000, and you can go down to 1,500, to 500 so just leave that like that let's boil a pot of water okay and then temperature there we go all right it's drawing 970 all right remember this you got to a thousand so we're going to change the watch to 1000 watts and watch it for a second <laughs> 1,130. Now, the older models will have died by now. It would have um, cut it out. So let's see if it runs it for a couple of minutes and boils the water for you. Now, this is really a game changer because you can you can boil, because um, kettles you can't use on these sorts of systems. They take way too much watts. Um, so yeah, you can't really, unless you find a really cheap one or something, but you can boil a pot of water, you can fry, cook your sausages, you can, I mean, you've got a fry pan now, you know, like it's a huge chain, game changer, or you can reheat the food that you bought. And that is chugging along, as you can see, at over the rated 1000, it's at 11 something, I can't see it, but oh, you can. Um, and it's just working beautifully. So why would you argue with that, right? See how it boils, how our water's going. Yep, it's getting hot. Now, obviously that's coping with that um, that drawer at the moment. Now, just do keep in mind that that is going to suck this battery, okay? So it's not going to suck it dry or anything, but you can certainly run it for an hour, an hour and a half, and it will be fine. And you don't need that long to heat something up. So, um, you know, it takes, what, 10 minutes to do bacon and eggs. So there you go. Now let's peek it out and I'll put it up onto 1500 watts and it should die. Done. It's aired. So I'm going to turn this off so it doesn't hurt it. You can already see that it's quit working on it. And there you go. So, I mean, that works perfectly fine. I'm just so impressed with it. So it will easily run a thousand watt appliance, a huge problem. It's just um, with boiling. There we go. I'm just going to unplug it because it's boiling its butt off. Um, yeah, so yeah, you can get kettles that run on lower power, but you would actually, this boiled this water in that time. It's, it's steaming. <laughs> so 
you can't argue, can you? So that's a really good one to take into mind. Okay, now there is another thing um, that we need to talk about and that is the amp hours. Now I have been talking to this company since it arrived over the last couple of days and it took them a long time to respond to me. Um, on the Australian website, which I'll show you now, a screenshot, you'll see it says 1500 watt, 405 amp hour. It is not 405 amp hour. I can tell you that by the weight. It's 17 kilos. It's not four and five, 405 amp hour. Um, now, so I contacted the manufacturer and I said, look, it doesn't add up. Um, because I'll tell you why in a little bit later in, when I explain the solar. Um, it doesn't add up. It should be 100 amp hour, not, um, it's actually about 117, I think, uh, not 405 amp hour. And they said that, no, it is 405 amp hour because they're 3.7 volt cells. And I said, but nobody's going out to buy a 3.7 volt charger. They're going to buy 12 volt 240. Does that make sense to you? It's like, I'm like, it's, it doesn't make sense. It's, it's a little bit, well, it's not fraudulent, but it's, you know, it's misleading. Let's go that way. Um, and then I finally did have somebody come back and say to him, yeah, that's right. You know, I'm sorry. Yeah, we didn't mean to sort of mislead you or blah, blah, blah. But we prefer you not measure the amp hours that you measure the uh, watt hours because that's how it's measured. And I did explain to him in Australia, when we buy a battery for RV purposes, we go by amp hours. We don't go by watts. I don't know anyone that does, to be honest. I don't know any country that actually goes by watts. Um, it is always the amp hours. So, um, and they responded and said that, you know, like Tesla's is all running. I'm like, That's a car, not, not a 12 volt 240 camping device, you know. So I will tell you, because, and even though they've requested that I don't, I will tell you that even though it does have 405 amp hour on there, it is not the 405 amp hour that you think it is. It is 117 amp hour. Um, so you can round it off 115 or whatever. So you, you're getting 120 amp hour battery kind of thing. Um, and don't think that you're getting any more than that because you are not. Um, and if you didn't know that about a battery and how much it should weigh, you would get fooled into thinking that you're getting a 400. So just as full disclosure, I'm sorry, Blue Eddie, if you didn't want me to do that, but um, I'm not going to lie to my, my subscribers or the people that watch my channel. Um, and not that it's a lie, it's a, let's just say it's a clarification, okay? I did request that they remove it off the website because I explained to them in Australia we have amp, we talk about amp hours and not watt hours. Um, and they said they would do it, they haven't done it yet. So, um, when you hit the link down below, the affiliate link, it may still be there. If it's not, please understand that you're not getting a 405 amp hour 12 volt battery. Okay. So, um, yeah, you're getting 117 ish amp hour battery. Okay. There we go. My GoPro had a little bit of a moment then, but it's all right. It's all good now. Um, okay. The other thing that I wanted to talk to you about was the, uh, solar array. Um, it has a little bit of a weird limitation, but you can get around it. So its maximum is 500 watts, which is actually really hard to attain um, because of the 10 amp max input current. So the 10 amp input is, is limiting, but you can actually put 400 on here quite easily with four panels of 100. Um, and I will show you that in a minute um, when I get my little drawing board out. Um, yeah, so... That's, that's sort of um, probably the ideal if you can put 400 on here, you won't need anything else, you know. So uh, the other thing I was going to tell you is inside of this is an MPPT um, charge controller. So what happens, um, people are just like, well, okay, yeah, Meredith, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> so what happens is your solar panel catches the energy and sends it down through the input channel here into the um, system into the charge controller. What the charge controller does, as particularly an MPPT, there's two different types, there's PVMs and MPPTs, and you really actually want an MPTT, MPPT, which is maximum power protection tracking. And what that does is basically, it gets the energy from 
the solar panels and it looks at the whole system that you've got and it, it gives us a maximum effect for that current and how it will disperse it through to the batteries okay so it actually sort of has a little calculator in its little brain um, and then that goes in the batteries and then you can actually draw the power from either the front or the back from there through the inverter okay but the thing that was I was super, super impressed with it on this unit is the battery um, monitoring system. So a BMS is basically a built-in protection. So, um, and this thing has got like a, like a lithium battery, for instance, right? If you charge, if you try and charge a lithium battery, a lithium ion phosphate battery, which this is, um, and it's cold, like really, really cold, you can actually just totally blitz your lithium battery they're not designed to be charged in in freezing weather right so what the bms does is it goes shuts off and it shuts off the ability to charge it and damage it so that the bms there is is actually to control the health of the battery and the one that is inside this little unit is fantastic it has all the best things in it that you would want the overcurrent protection everything so you can't really damage the unit um and just keeps everything sort of safe and secure. You know, you don't have to worry about them. Yeah, so all in all, I mean, I've got to say this thing, it kicks butt. I reckon you could probably, if you're not drawing on um, major appliances like the, the cooktop there, if you use that like three times to heat something up over the weekend um, and then all you're doing is you know using it for a light or for charging your phones and your ipads your laptops all that sort of stuff i mean phones take like three or four watts it's nothing so um you know this thing could last you days i don't think you'd even need to charge it um i don't actually have a detached solar panel i charge it through my solar panels through my inverter on the roof of my van so um i charge it a completely different way but that's because i've got so much solar um, that it can do it that way. Um, but you wouldn't, obviously you wouldn't set it up that way. That's not the way it's intended for, but it's the only way I could power it because I never um, go to caravan parks. I'm never on 240. So um, yeah, so very, very interesting. I think it would last you about three days for a whole weekend away and even more if you use it wisely. So, I mean, you, you can use it to charge your drills or whatever, you know, or if your house lights go out, you know, you can still run appliances. So, um, yeah, quite freaky, you know, like you could chuck the TV on here and it would work. Uh, so it's quite extraordinary when you think about it. Um, but, yeah, look, I've got to tell you, it gets a big blue tick from me. And I have absolutely fallen in love with this. And I can see it in so many different uh, situations where it would be super beneficial. So, um, yeah, that's got my tick. Now, I'll go and get my whiteboard and I'll explain a few other things for the solar running on it for you. Okay. Right, I think we're still going. Yes, yes. Right, um, basically I've just written this out. Hopefully this will make a little bit more sense. Um, so I can show you. So here we've got the blue eddy limits, right? So this you've got to come within this range to be most effective. And it's actually quite hard to do at a 500. Um, but 400 works very, very well. Um, and it's probably a cheaper option anyway because there's only 100 watt panels. And these are, so these are the words that you, you know, you take from your Blue Eddy manual. That tells you the load limits all, all here. Now, um, but these are the words on the back of the solar panel or wherever you buy it from in the description. These are the words that you need to be looking for, okay? So, um, let's show you how you can fire this sucker up with 400 watts of um, power without being too hard and having to work it all out. But I'm gonna teach you a bit at the same time. Now, I'll just tell you one thing that you need to know that's super important. There's two ways to put panels on your roof. You can put them in series or you can put them in parallel and they have different, or you can do both, um, and they have different consequences. So series means that amps 
multiply or add actually it's probably add add and volts remain the same this will make sense to you in a second and then if you put it in parallel then volts add and amps remain the same okay our problem with the blue eddy is this 10 amps okay so it makes it a bit difficult um, to get in the amperage range and the only way that I can find is the 100 watt panels there's probably another way but um, my little brain is only working one way so and that is to have four 100 watt panels so that's one two three four right now all right and let's draw the blue eddy so that's the blue eddy okay and out of him comes two cables and that's this cable here so he plugs into the input of the blue eddy and that's your positive and negative or the other way around that's positive and that's the negative one of uh, the solar panel connection okay so that comes with it all right now so you understand on the um, solar panels there's a positive and a negative connection oh, gosh I took that the wrong way positive and a negative and then a positive and a negative and a positive and a negative same here that's a negative that one's a positive okay so what you need to do to make it work is you need to cheat the system so you're going to have a positive so if you string them together so if we have two series ones so th those are in series and those are in series and then we're going to join them in parallel so the positive cable goes to the negative cable and then the positive cable comes out and this negative cable comes out right and then this negative joins that positive that negative comes out so that's a negative that's a positive that's a negative and this positive comes out here and then what we need to make this because so now we've got two positives and two negatives and we've only got one here so you need to buy a product called a branch adapter which I'll show you and then that will make it come out like that and you add them onto here and then now you've got a negative here and a positive there a negative here and a positive there and then you can join them all right and you think okay that sounds really complex it's really not guys it's super not but let me tell you that show you the magic here and that's how we get around this 10 amp issue so each of those panels are 100 watts they're 5 amps and I think 21.4 volts I think it was on the particular ones that I was looking at so that's what you're looking at um, okay so we know when we're in series the amps add up and the volts remain the same so that means these two are going to be 10 amps right and we know the volts remain the same so it's 21.4 volts and always the 100 watts the panel size is doubled so it doesn't matter right so that's one series so that's that section right there equals that right but then we put them in parallel and they both equal that right so that one equals the same so and then we put them in parallel which joins them together so we need to add those together right now we know when parallel volts add so we volts so it makes it 42.8 and obviously we know the watts add up together so that becomes 400 watts and the amps remains the same so that's um, I don't know what the symbol is for the same but anyway it's still 10 amps All right and you can see you bring that up to here so max power we've got 400 short circuit voltage is 10 and your um, what's the name was 42.8 put it on so you can see now we've got everything covered do you see that so we're under or equal to everything 42 is under 60 volts over 16 10 amps bang on 400 
under 500 and that will charge um, little blue eddy in about three hours in in nice sun um, so as opposed to on 240 volt which is mains power it'll take around between eight and ten hours okay that's from empty so um, yeah I hope that makes sense it will when you see it um, it, it is very very simple so you just basically string these along right and it just keeps you can put as many in there as you like but obviously for this system this is what all we're talking about that is the simplest way to do it um, and then you still get wonderful power so you could put that on your roof or you could um, you know get the foldable ones that can sit outside or whatever you can you do it in but so when you go into the shop you know you can tell them that you need panels that fit within this sort of amperage or you can tell them this is the maximum you've got what can you do so just read the book and it will tell you all the maximums that you need and when you go into the shop and do it you should be able to get 400 uh, I can't see how you can get five because I keep going up in amps I, I, my amperage keeps changing so um, it's not good <laughs> so I can't get it any other way but that works for me uh, you can actually buy specific blue eddy ones um, but they are quite expensive and if you want to spend that then that's fine uh, they look like really good quality panels um, but yeah so there you go I hope that makes sense right what else was going to show you now I've got to wash this off and it's like permanent pen does anybody want to do it for me yeah or I could just go like that and it's like oh 